grateful that you join us. So would you subscribe to this call for a nationwide lockdown? This is coming from the Ghana Medical Association. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to your church viewers. Uh, I'm not in a position to give my personal view publicly. I would rather share that with the interministerial committee that is meeting with the president uh, from time to time. Uh, I believe that uh, today they had a meeting. And uh, uh, today the president also constituted a small group uh, committee uh, of which I'm a member to make sure that the contact tracing is uh, accelerated uh, faster mm -hmm. so that uh, those whose travel history uh, within the past uh, period that we think uh, would impact on the spread or otherwise of the virus. Because uh, now we have 869 contacts traced yes. as, as we speak. Yes. Now, but it becomes a lot more difficult. At least, uh, I mean, I've had health experts admit the fact that because now we have community spread, it's a lot more difficult identifying contacts. The truth of the matter is that the community spread is not very, very widespread. But of course, uh, this is like uh, fire. And so if we don't move in quickly to if I say uh, notionally, call on these people to be able to uh, get all those who may be testing positive to treat them, then we may be spreading. That's why I have kept saying that the window to see the spread or otherwise is the next two weeks. Next two weeks? Exactly, because the incubation period is 14 days. Well, but then again, you see, before this mandatory law, uh, uh, um, uh, what you call it, quarantine, which has produced 38 of the 68 cases within 48 hours. Yes. We had people coming into the country prior to Saturday. Fantastic. So, so, so why do we have to wait for two weeks? No, I'm not saying that we have to wait for two weeks. And that's why the president constituted us for us to make sure that we call on these people and deal with it decisively as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. All right? But I'm saying that in all this, right, mm -hmm. The next two weeks is what is going to actually show sure. clearly whether there has been a widespread uh, community uh, 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 spread of the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the disease. But we, don't have, we are not waiting for that. And that is why the president, in his wisdom, put together this team to assist those who are doing the contact tracing. I right? See. And I believe that here uh, uh, people so, should uh, not talk so much about their privacy and uh, human rights and all those kinds of because we may have to then get information even from uh, immigration who and who and who came in right because as at now anybody who came in is a potential uh, carrier I'll, I'll have you hold on to uh, that point for me now we're going to go to Sierra Leone because you know that is one of I think two or three countries on the continent that have re not recorded any case now authorities in Sierra Leone on Tuesday declared a 12-month state of emergency to help deal with the spread of the coronavirus. Now, the country, which was ravaged during the 2014-2016 Ebola outbreak, has yet to record a confirmed case of COVID-19, but President Julius Madabio is saying Sierra Leone needed to take effective measures and that includes the state of emergency that they have uh, uh, declared. And Sierra Leone's neighbors, Guinea and Liberia, have both reported uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19. And uh, Mada Bill had already outlined measures to restrict uh, the spread of the virus, as well as provide testing and treatment. What's happening in Sierra Leone? Well, they haven't recorded the case, but Mother Bill is talking about uh, a state of emergency. Honorable, hold on for me with that point. I'm, I'm just going to go on to Skype now. And uh, Francis Soa is a journalist, and uh, he's joined us from uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, Francis, thank you. If you can hear me, good evening to you, first of all. Uh, uh, what's, what, what are you guys doing differently um, that you haven't recorded a case as we speak? Fortunately, uh, we'll try and fix that in a bit uh, as a technical hitch there. But we'll connect with uh, Francis shortly to give us, uh, indeed, uh, an overview of what's happening in, in Sierra Leone. But this is what's happening in Sierra Leone, uh, 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 Mr. Deputy Minister. So we, we have 
they don't have a case, but they have declared a, a state of emergency. You think that we shouldn't go in the same path of being proactive before, you know, we're looking for all the, you know, the chips to be in the right places before we declare lockdown? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, here, let me speak as a lawyer, because when you're talking about state of emergency, it's different powers altogether mm -hmm. in the constitution that the president can exercise, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we may get to a lockdown, not necessarily, uh, I mean, uh, declaring a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. We may get there. As of now, I do not know if the uh, president, weighing all the circumstances uh, and the advice that he receives from the uh, Interministerial Committee is going to uh, declare a lockdown. That one I do not know, mm. right? Uh -huh. But, uh, of course, we... But let's look at this. Out of the abundance of doubt, and, and also out of the abundance of caution, let me put it this way. If people out there, as many, show up to test, can we meet that demand? It's one of the reasons why we met. Because we want to make sure that all those who came in uh, are tested. So we are prepared for that demand. In fact, tomorrow morning, we are meeting We are meeting with Noguchi and all those who matter in this exercise. And then whatever uh, uh, logistics, I mean, uh, uh, clinical logistics or even uh, mobile logistics that are required for this exercise to be uh, as uh, complete and decisive as possible is done. I want to thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank Should you. Be grateful. We, we have eyes on what's happening and uh, I'll be getting you some more updates on this.